What's up, everyone? This is Gail Dudley, and it is time for the News in Motion podcast. I want to talk about Francis Ann Solomon, film director, uh uh-huh, producer, writer. Yes, she is amazing, y'all. She's a trailblazer in the film and television industry. Francis Ann Solomon is an award-winning film and television director, curator, and businesswoman. She's born in England of a tri- uh, tri- Trinidadian parents. She was raised and educated in the Caribbean and Canada before moving to Great Britain, where she built a successful career with the BBC as a TV drama producer and executive producer. Ah, I said a whole lot right there, y'all. Yes. Y'all, she also produced and directed films and television programs through her production company, uh, Lita Serene Films. I hope I said that right. Frances Ann moved back to Toronto in 2000, where she continues to create, write, direct, and produce her own projects, y'all. Directing credits, y'all, include the feature film A Winter Tale, uh, Peggy Sue, Uh, That's BBC Films and City TV. What My Mother Told Me, Channel 4 Films, the short film uh, Badeshi, uh, the British Film Institute and Documentaries Literature Alive, Bravo, and is a long-memoried woman, Arts Council of England. Her latest feature film, Hero, inspired by an extraordinary life and times of Mr. Ulrich, Cross has received wide critical acclaimed opening a slew of international festivals and is now available on Showtime, y'all, in the U.S. She has produced multi-award winning features, Kingston Paradise, directed by Mary Wells, and was the co-creator, producer, and director of Lord Have Mercy, Canada's first Caribbean sitcom that aired on Vision TV Toronto One, showcased in APTN, and starred comedian actor Russell Peters, y'all. The show has received two Gemini nominations. I need y'all to hit that share button before we bring her on here. She is the founder and CEO of the Caribbean Tales Media Group, which produces, exhibits, and distributes Black content for a global audience, including the Caribbean Tales International Film Festival. Now in its 16th year, the creators of Color Incubator, a development and production hub, a Caribbean Tales TV, our digital VOD. In 2015, she founded Cinefam, which supports bold original film stories by women of color creators worldwide. Y'all can see while I'm excited. Frances Ann is a director and member of the Academy of Motion, Picture Arts and Sciences and the Director and and the Directors Guild of Canada. All of that, y'all. All of that. I'm I'm so excited. Isaiah, please bring on our guest, Frances Ann Solomon. Good morning. You're um I need your your um you're muted. Morning. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Good morning, good morning, good morning. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here. So excited. So we're going to jump in. We're going to jump in. We're going to jump in. And we will also have different um, viewers who may put their questions up there. We'll get to as many as we can, everyone. Um, But I want to start with this. In November, I was reading that you launched Black Market Releasing, uh, BMR. Tell us about that. It just sounds so amazing. Well, yes. As you know, we're very excited. As you know, Black films and films by people of color have the potential to have huge audiences and make lots of money for their creators and for everybody else. Um, And we at Caribbean Tales Media Group, we've been seeing that over the last two decades because we've had film festivals that have packed out the house. You know, Black people and people of color, they want to see themselves on screen. But this is, yeah, but this is a huge gap in the distribution, the film distribution market, Mm -hmm. because basically I'd say 90, well, certainly in Canada, all the film distributors are run by white people um, and owned by white people. And the reason why that is significant is that honestly, from my experience, they don't understand our audiences Mm. and they don't understand how to access our audiences. That's not part of what they've traditionally done. So usually they get a black film. They're like, Oh, we'll put it, you know, in the cinema and do Mm. some publicity and that's it. 
But because we know our audiences, we thought that it was a time, it was time for us to start a distribution company for Black uh, films and, and films by people of color. So that's why we started it. I love that. So if somebody was interested in becoming a part of it or learning more about it, where could they go to find this information to apply or to be a part of it or to even contribute to it? Blackmarketreleasing.ca. That's what it is. Blackmarketreleasing.ca. And in terms of the name Black Market Releasing, we want to say that there is an untapped market for our content. Wow. Now, how do we reach that market? Have you answered that question? Look, I'm all ears now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in terms of our audiences and everything I said before about, you know, being able to access yeah. audiences that we like to see ourselves on screen and we're happy to come. But you have to reach out to us. You know, you have to be able to connect with us. Yes. That's, that's yes. the secret, you know, and that's why we as black creators, we're just better at, 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 um, at exhibiting and selling black content. That's true. Do you think that there's a level of fear between those who believe they have the gift or they, they want to, they aspire to be in Black filmmaking, but they have a fear of making the connection? And if so, how do we help them make that connection? You mean in terms of white-owned companies? Or, yes. Or, yeah. No, white I, owned, I yeah. think it's genuinely a gap in their knowledge. You know, they just, you know, you grow up, I mean, you know, you grow up with white people, your friends are white people, you go to school with white people, you go to university with white people. And then, so you don't, you don't understand. And it is actually a very segregated market in a lot of mm. ways. And so you don't understand what to do. You don't have the connections into the community. You don't have the connections with the, with the community organizations that really can, you know, connect with people. Um, and so it's just it's just been traditionally a big gap. And also the other thing is um, so, you know, what's been happening in the past is that they would contact me and say, can you do this work for us? Mm -hmm. um, and my response has been like, yeah, are you paying me? But, you know, so now the you know, it's just like, you know what, we'll do it and we'll we'll do it <laughs> and right. we'll make the because we can. You know, because we've been running festivals for so long. Yeah, I love that. Kenny Stanley, he's one of the people, um, he comes on now with me on Mondays because he has a love for sports. And he's saying, I knew that I would be involved in sports somehow. I played and coached, but I knew there was something more. What did Miss Solomon know that she, when did Miss Solomon know, excuse me, that she wanted to be in the business of film? Well, honestly, when I was a child, I always wrote stories and then I started putting them on a stage for my dad. You know, I would have these shows where my dad was the only person who'd come to them, you know, that kind of thing. And then I always said I wanted to be a writer because I always loved storytelling. And gr honestly, growing up in the Caribbean, being a filmmaker was not an option, right? It wasn't really something that there was. Um, okay. And it certainly wasn't like, oh, you know, you grow up and you become a filmmaker. No, it was Dr. Lawyer, if you were lucky, right? Right, right. So um, it wasn't until I got to university, I went, I actually decided to study theater. And when I went into a theater for the first time as a director, mm -hmm. you know, I was directing my first theater play. I just felt, it just was like falling into a slot that had been made for me. I felt like I just come home. Um, and from then on, it was like, okay, how do I tell stories on a bigger platform? Oh, and so, God. you know, it became, you know, you've got to make films uh, because that is the new, that is the new medium. It is the medium of our time is filmmaking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that. We talked about the black market uh, releasing. You also launched the Caribbean Tales Black Incubator um, and Studio Access Project. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And I see another question in the audience, but we'll get to that in a moment. Tell us a little bit more about the Caribbean Tales Black Incubator and Studio Access Project. Well, we've been running an incubator for, um, for black creatives and creatives of color since 2010. Um, because our our belief was that it wasn't it wasn't good it wasn't enough to make films and to show films. We also needed to train. We also needed as creators of color to enter the the market to be able to be sustainable to sell films and make money from them and make a living. And so we started the incubator in order to train creators of color. 
uh, to create marketable and market ready content for the international market. Because in a way, um, we have wide audience potential because of we like as black people, it's not just Canada or the US that our audiences reside. We have massive audiences um, in Africa. We have massive audiences in the Caribbean and South America. And we also have big audiences in every major urban center of the world. So it's important to see our um, um, you know, monetization potential as global, as part of that global diaspora. So we wanted to train filmmakers in that process. We started it in 2010. And so this year, we're focusing specifically on Black entrepreneurs. That's that's um, why we call, we're calling it an entrepreneurial incubator. I love that. Thank you for that. We also have Lori Wallace, who's a, a viewer. Um, she's also, she writes screenplays. Um, she's Corey, she's choreag she is a, a choreographer of a play coming up in Ohio. She says, being a creative, we're always thinking of how or beyond. What finally made you take the leap to make your dream a reality? Well, you know, um, I always, I guess I, I, one one thing is that I always was committed to be, being a film director. And as a woman of color, that was pretty much off the table in some ways as mm -hmm. I was as I entered the the job market because the the kinds of people who became film directors were white men. That's it. Um, the, it was very clear. But I was committed to it. Um, when I took the leap, I'd been working at the BBC for maybe 10 years, and I decided to take the leap and start my own company and commit to it. And that was really um, just frustration with the, with the limitations that existed within um, you know, traditional networks. I just thought it's better for me to be independent and to push, even though I'll be on my own now. I won't even have a job. Um, and so for you know, I'd say for, you know, many, many years, there was the sense that, you know, you were just in a wilderness and you ha I had to just keep going despite everything. And I think in the end, it's paid off. Wow. Thank you for that. Thank you. I see another question from the audience from Davia Williams Stevenson. She says, do you see your work as a form of political activism? Absolutely. Unapologetically. Um, not that I have, not that it's, polemical or didactic. I don't want it to feel like, you know, I'm making speeches, but I feel like, you know, from the time I was a child, as a child, I didn't see myself in, in books. I didn't see myself on television screens. And it has been healing for me and a revelation for me to discover the power, the healing power of storytelling in terms of um, making us feel whole making us know who we are, where we're going, where where we belong, who are, you know, it gives you power and it gives you confidence and it gives you dignity. Without that, um, you know, we are, we are what our slave masters wanted us to be, which is, which is um, disempowered. So I feel definitely that that is, that is part of what I do. Wow, thank you. And, and I, I can speak a little bit on um, Davia um, Williams Stevenson. She just released a podcast, um, pr probably the fall of last year, called Tales from a Shaker. So when I was reading your bio and I saw your um, piece here on Caribbean Tales Black Incubator, I immediately thought of Davia because of the work that she's doing and how it's growing. So you're helping the audience right here. You're helping us. Um, if I can ask a couple more questions before we get out of here. Um, what what finally pushed you to actually take the leap to make your dream a reality? What 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 was that thing that just says I'm going all in and I'm going to make this dream? I'm going to take this path. I'm going to do this and I'm I'm going to see how it, how it fleshes out. Well, two times really. In terms of going um, solo as an entrepreneur, building my business, that was that was 20 years ago, just based on the frustration of working within the Beeb. Um, and feeling constantly like, uh, you know, you're talking Greek or you're, you know, dealing, you're an alien in a, in, in the wrong place, um, surrounded by people from another planet because they don't understand what you're talking about. And just that stress, you know, constantly. And then the other piece of it is 
I think when George Floyd was murdered and our industry underwent this massive transformation two years ago, for me, that just was like, okay, let's go. Because this is our time. This is our moment and work. We can do it now. And so we've just thrown everything at the, at the you know, we're ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're ready for sure. Your film hero um, will make a triumphant return to a, 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 uh, to TNT with the uh, gala red carpet screening. How can we tune in? That's happening on April the 7th, 2022 at the Cinema Ones and Cinema Ones Gemstone and IMAX theaters. Please tell us about this film and how can we help tune in and be a part and celebrate you and all of that? So Hero, um, we launched it in 2019 and traveled to England, the States. Um, we had theatrical release, uh, theatrical release in the UK um, and we screened it in the United States and in Canada. And uh, we had plans to take it from Trinidad, which is where I'm from, in the cinemas all the way up. Uh, we had a screening planned in Cannes. We were going to Ghana, which is also where it was shot. Um, so we wanted, we really have been planning to go global, but of course COVID came and we had to postpone this launch in the Caribbean, Hero Coming Home for two years. And so yay, now we're about to, you know, and I can't wait, honestly, because it's a very much Trinidad story. It's a story about a Trinidadian man who, um, you know, joined the army, during the Second World War, and then went on to join the Pan-African movement in Ghana, Congo, and Tanzania, um, and it's in the 50s. Mm. And, and, and it's a story that people don't know, that our, our lives, um, as people coming from the African diaspora, our lives um, you know, are so uh, global that we have these connections. Um, and I think that's a great, you know, I started off by saying that, that our connections, our audiences, our, our scope uh, is global. And I think it's worth saying it again. Wow, thank you. One thing I'm committed to doing here is always hearing from our young people. So I'm going to ask Isaiah to come in and ask. He has a particular question he would like to ask you and what he's doing. So Isaiah, bring yourself on in. Hi, Isaiah. Yeah, where is he? There he is. <laughs> Hello, Miss uh, Francis Ann. It is a huge honor to meet you. Uh, just one particular question I have. Um, as an aspiring filmmaker, um, what would you what would be your advice to um, someone who's listening, especially um, you know, you know, a young person of color who you know is inspired by film or is so fascinated by film? What, what would be your advice to them? Well, you know, up until a couple of years ago, I would have said, you know, don't do it, basically. But now I feel that there are opportunities. And the most important thing you need to do is to treat it like a business. And then to, to treat your talent, your authentic voice, your story, your point of view as um, monetizable. Value it that much. Do you understand what I mean? And go for it. Say, this is this is my gift to the world and I deserve to make money off it. And you have to be so single-minded because, because mm. it's not an obvious thing. And then go where the money is, go where the business is. I'm not talking about being rich. I'm talking about where do people make films? Go there, you know? Okay. I love that. Thank you for, for answering this question. Thank you, Isaiah, for coming Isaiah, for you. On to ask. Yes. <laughs> It's so lovely to, to see you. Thank you. It is a it is a huge honor to meet you again. Um, you know, you're one of the greatest filmmakers I've ever heard of. So Aww. it is a huge honor to meet you. Thank you so much, my love. <laughs> and I wish you all success. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Deborah Johnson, one of our viewers, says, monetize your talent. And I think that's one thing we are not doing today. We're not monetizing well, our it's talent. Not a, it's not in our tradition. Like, we have, we have been you know, trained not to think like that. And especially about our creative talent. You know, the, the, the colonizers and the slave masters knew very well that taking away our voice, our language, our confidence, all those things would disempower us. It wasn't just physical slavery, as you know, has been said over and over. It was mental slavery and there were specific mechanisms. So taking back our voice and saying our voice has value, 
is really, really important. Not that you want to be a millionaire or be mercenary about it, but you need to understand that this is, and because of the the barriers that have traditionally existed, it's not easy, but you have to understand and you have to go for that. Yes. You know, what's interesting as we get ready to sign off here, what's interesting is that um, doing this show now going on um, almost two years, as I was sharing with you in the green room, um, the sponsors that have been reaching out to us what they there's always this clause in there they want to to some degree censor me i'm like i'm not doing that i gotta find another way of doing this to make it go continue to grow and succeed but there's always some sort of censorship are you finding that even with films that people want to censor you if they want to um help uh, invest in or help you with your films yeah and i i love what you i love this this uh point because monetization does not mean selling out right? You have to, um, that's also part of it, right? Um, you need to um, understand that a tool of the oppressor is censorship. And so in order to retain our authenticity and our voice, and that makes it harder, that makes it very much harder, as you know, but yeah. you have to hold on and keep, um, keep insisting that no, it's not a censored voice because once you start cutting into what you do, cutting up into pieces, and then eventually it doesn't make any sense anymore. Do you right. Know I mean? Yeah. You right. Know I mean? Right. That's happening. So how can people, we have your website up here. How can people reach out to you? Is it through your contact form on your website? And what would you like to share with us? How can we also contribute? I'm always building on this show that if anybody has something going on, we want to show our support. So could you let us know how we can contact you and how we can contribute to help support the work that you're doing, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. So yeah, that's my website, francisansolomon.com. And then also we have um, the Caribbean Tales. You can Google the various arms, Caribbean Tales Media Group, which includes Caribbean Tales Film Festival, Caribbean Tales TV, Caribbean Tales Flix, Caribbean Tales Worldwide Distribution, um, and then also Cinefam. So all of those, cinefam.ca, and that has its own. And also we have a film festival in the UK, the Windrush Caribbean Film Festival now. So um, we're fulfilling our purpose of thinking global. Um, so you can go to any of those, um, look up any of those things, and you can access us through through there, depending on what you want to do. Film that you're interested in having screened, you want to get involved in our productions, you, you want to talk to one of us, yeah. There's multiple points of entry and also social media, of course, on all platforms. And your, um, I think I have it here, your, your Instagram, maybe I don't have it. Can you give us your Instagram real quick, please? La Belle Shabine. La Belle Shabine, L-A-B-E-L-L-E-S-H-A-B-I-N-E. Okay, and we'll put that in the in the chat as well with everyone. Y'all, sounds like there's a news in motion, um, uh, a vacation, a, a conference, a film festival we can all go to and meet <laughs> up and, and, and support Frances Ann and her amazing work. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I greatly appreciate you. I know the uh, the audience appreciates you as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much to you both. All right, have a great day. Thank you, bye. <laughs> All right, y'all, it's time for the inspirational message and we're out of here. Wasn't she fabulous? Hopefully you were taking notes. You're going to follow up, go to her website, see all the great things that she is doing. I know I'm supporting it. I'm trying to figure out how I can get to Trinidad. Hello, somebody. Real quick, y'all, here's the inspirational message. Live into what God has for you. Live into that. Live in what you stand for. Live into what you stand for. What is it that you stand for? Identify what that looks like and live into it. What do I mean by living into it? I'm saying walk it out every day. Do something. Progress. Enjoy. Have fun. Skip if you need to. Run if you have to. But live into uh, what you stand for. Also, live into your accomplishments. Y'all heard her. Y'all look, when you go to her website, you're going to be so impressed. Her accomplishments are many. She is an outstanding film director, producer, and writer. So live into your accomplishments. Do not be afraid to let people know your, what, you, what you have accomplished. Your accomplishments are grand. They are exciting. Live into those accomplishments. Also live into your greater. 
Live into your greater. It may not look like it's great right now, but live into that. Live into it anyway. Live into your greater. Y'all also define, define what your greater looks like. So get out your pencil and paper. Think about it today and define what that looks like. Um, y'all, I took a lot of notes the other day just to write this up, to share this with you. So just give me a few more moments and we'll be out of here. Um, love God and love you. I talked about this uh, yes, uh, the other day. Love God and love yourself. Do you. Y'all, here's something. And yep, y'all may think this is a little boastful, but I'm going to say it anyway. Be the force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I said it. Be the force to be reckoned with. Um, also, uh, live, you. Do not get caught up in trying to be someone else. Do not get caught up in trying to be somebody else. Guess what? You're not gonna, you're not gonna succeed that way. You're not going to be happy and your joy is going to slip away. Do you be you, love you? That is so important. Y'all be centered, have confidence have clarity and commit to something. I'm going to give that to you again. Be centered, have confidence, have clarity, and be committed. Be committed into what you're doing. Y'all, Frances Ann Solomon didn't just arrive there. She worked there. You heard her answers to the questions that we were asking. And there was, there was progress. She kept going. You heard what she said to Isaiah. Oh, a couple years ago, I would say, don't do it. She goes, now I would say, do it. Y'all, we cannot be afraid to monetize. We cannot be afraid to monetize. Y'all, there's a great resignation that's happening. Everybody's working from home. I've been looking at where these people are going. Many, many people have started a business, a company, and what they're doing. They're doing it, y'all. They're doing it. They are doing it. So it's time for you to do it. So you want to have you want to be centered, you want to have confidence, you want to have clarity, and you want to commit. And then live by surrounding yourself with others who are thriving, who are thriving. Iron sharpens iron. So you want to surround yourself with others who are thriving. All right, y'all, make a life decision today, whatever that looks like. Y'all, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Continue to share the work that Frances Ann Solomon is doing. Y'all, it is amazing. Her work is amazing. I am so thrilled that she uh, she said, I want to come on News in Motion. And I am just so grateful for her and, again, the work that she's doing. Thank you all who participated in sharing questions. Thank you, Isaiah, for always coming on on the spot. He's that, he's that, young, per that young man. And that young black man that I want to continue to highlight and put out there. So yeah, I might be a little biased. He's my nephew too. So I'm doing it anyway, but I want to see all of you thrive. So start thinking about what that looks like for you and what you want to do. What does that look like for you? And what do you want to do? Y'all know what I say. Y'all stay well, everyone. Wear your mask. I'm wearing mine. I don't care what they're dropping. I'm going to keep wearing my mask. Practice social distancing. Hey, listen, stay up off of me. Don't be rolling up on me. I like the space. I like it. It's been now going on three years. Back up. I like it. Don't let's not huddle like that again. No, no, I'm going to need you to back up. I need you to stay away. Wear your mask. And please wash your hands. Why we've been telling people to wash their hands for three years, I have no idea. It's something I learned in kindergarten. We should always be washing our hands. I don't know why that became an issue for people. I don't get it. I don't get it. I have been your host, Gail Dudley. This has been your News in Motion. Are you ready to raise awareness of your brand, product, or service? Gail, the host of News in Motion is an influencer who brings attention to every product she mentions. She started out with a few followers and is growing her base daily. Listeners tune in Monday through Friday from around the U.S. and beyond. Let Gail help you expand and connect with new customers from all around. To get your brand, product, or services mentioned on her shows, just contact info.gaildudley at gmail.com to request her media deck. Catch Gail each weekday on News in Motion on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash news in motion or her YouTube at youtube.com slash Gail Dudley. You can also follow Gail on Instagram and Twitter at Gail Dudley and visit her website www.gaildudley.com. Until next week, 
as Gail always signs off. Stay well and remember to make some moves.